If you're doing one of these three things, if you're constantly pointing out what's lacking in the relationship or in your partner, if you're teasing or embarrassing them in public, or if you're sweeping things under the rug, letting resentment build and not addressing what matters to you directly with your partner, but then making passive aggressive comments, then no matter how many I love you's you say during the day or how much of their quote unquote love language you use, your communication will not contribute to having a loving and thriving long-term relationship. I don't like to argue. So I say nothing and fume for days. How do I set boundaries without sounding like a jerk? I hate the idea that I might accidentally offend somebody, so sometimes I'd just rather say nothing at all. Welcome to the Language Alchemy Podcast, and thank you for joining me today. This is your host, Alejandra Siroca, a transformative communication teacher and coach devoted to helping you transform your communication. Because when you transform your communication, you transform your life and all your relationships. Thank you so much for being here. And whether this is your first or your 83rd time, I'm so grateful you're listening to this podcast episode. Because in this episode, we are going to talk about something essential for a meaningful life. Today, we are going to look at long-term relationships with a significant other And I am going to help you assess if you are communicating in a way to keep this long-term relationship loving and thriving. Whether you are in a committed relationship now or you'd like to be in one in the future, it's crucial to know how you are communicating because the health and well-being of a loving relationship depends on the quality of your communication. So, Right now, if you're currently in a relationship, make an intention to take an honest look as to how you are communicating. And if you're not in a long-term relationship at this moment, but you would like to be in one, think about past relationships and how you communicated in them. Because if you don't explore what you brought to your most significant relationships in the past, you are likely to reproduce your communication habits in a new relationship in the future. Now, last week in episode 82, we talked about the secret that needed to be present in your communication to be able to maintain a loving and thriving long-term relationship. If you haven't listened to it, you can check out episode 82 and I'll add the link in the show notes. But let's say that you are communicating in those loving ways I described in episode 82. If that's the case, well, that's fantastic. And that's not all. In fact, all these loving ways in which you are telling your partner that you love them can be completely undermined if you also have one or all of these three communication habits. Number one, if you're constantly looking at what's lacking in the relationship or mentioning what could be better. For example, let's say that you and your partner have very young children and your partner is the one who always gets up at night every time your little ones need care or comforting. So your partner is sleep deprived. Yet, your partner managed to do a quick run at the grocery store after work, and they even called you from the car to ask you if you needed anything. How loving, right? You said yes, and you told your partner a few things that you needed from the grocery store. So then your partner comes home, And even before the groceries are put away, you ask, um, did you get the shallots? And when you see your partner's face and you realize with their expression that the answer is no, I forgot, your immediate response is, I knew you were going to forget them. Ouch. If that is what comes out of your mouth, or if this is how it comes out of your mouth, 
It will take a lot for your partner who's sleep deprived to not feel hurt. Or let's say it's Valentine's Day and your partner gives you an envelope. When you open the envelope, you see a gift certificate with your name on it and a reservation at a spa. And your response is, oh, I wish you had gotten me a full body massage and not just a facial. Ouch. If this is what you say to your partner or how you say it, it's very likely your partner will take it personally. I want to give you another example of constantly looking at what's lacking in the relationship or mentioning what could be better, because unfortunately, this happens so frequently with every couple I work with. And this is when a partner sincerely apologizes for something they did or said, and the immediate response they receive from the other partner is, and how about what you said a year ago? Are you also going to apologize for that? Ouch. If every time your partner recognizes their limitation or apologizes to you and that's not enough for you, it's very likely that your partner will feel less and less confident that they can repair the connection with you. And it's likely that in the future, the apologies will be few and far between. If as you're listening to these examples, you're recognizing that you are someone whose brain is constantly looking at what's not working, what's lacking, what's not enough, what could be better, then it's important to be aware that your communication will center around criticism, correction, or passive aggression. And when this is how you communicate on a regular basis, The quality of your communication is not contributing to a loving and thriving long-term relationship, even if you're also communicating in one of the loving ways I mentioned in episode 82, and even if every night when you go to bed, you say, I love you to your partner. Number two. Something that you also need to refrain from if you'd like to ensure you keep this long-term relationship loving and thriving is to refrain from teasing or embarrassing your partner in public. I remember years ago, I was in a car with another couple. One of them was driving and his partner was on the passenger seat. Matthew and I were on the back seat. As we were approaching our destination, The woman who was on the passenger seat started to read the parking signs out loud. We were in an area where there are lots of parking rules, and you can get a ticket so easily if you don't pay attention to the signs. Well, after the woman finished reading the first sign out loud, her partner's immediate response was, you think I don't know how to read? And then he added, I used to live around here and I know where to park. To defuse the situation, the woman made a joke, and her partner immediately said, Oh, honey, you better stick to your day job. Being a comedian is not going to pay the bills. Ouch. Being in the car at that moment was uncomfortable for everyone. But for this wonderful woman who was being embarrassed and teased by her husband in front of others, this communication was not only not loving, It was really hurtful. A third communication habit you need to refrain from if you would like to keep a long-term relationship alive and thriving is to refrain from sweeping things under the rug. When you sweep things under the rug, you don't talk about what matters. You don't let your partner know when you are upset disappointed, frustrated, when something's not working for you. And maybe you think that you don't want to offend your partner and that's why you don't say anything and you may even pretend everything is okay. But the problem is that under that metaphoric rug, especially if you've been in this relationship for years, under that metaphoric rug, there is a lot of resentment built up. And when resentment grows, you may not even notice this, 
but it slips out periodically in communication in the form of passive aggression. Let me give you an example. Let's say that it's been hard for you that your spouse changes jobs every so often or that your partner is frequently telling you about a new project or a new business idea they want to pursue. And as time goes by, nothing comes to fruition. Your partner just switches to another job or to another project. In the moment when your partner is telling you about their new project, their new job, you don't say anything out loud. You don't reveal what's going on for you. You don't share about your fears. You don't express your needs for certainty or security. And you sort of let your spouse do their thing. But you're not even aware that you often make exaggerated comments about your friends' spouses or their partners who hold a steady job or who have a long-term career. And... You don't even think anything of making frequent little hurtful comments that in an indirect way refer to your discontent about your partner. And at the same time, you don't make the space to express any of this directly to your partner. If you frequently communicate in this way through passive aggression and avoid talking about things that matter, this is not going to ensure that your long-term relationship is going to be loving and thriving. If you're doing one of these three things, if you're constantly pointing out what's lacking in the relationship or in your partner, if you're teasing or embarrassing them in public or if you're sweeping things under the rug, letting resentment build and not addressing what matters to you directly with your partner, but then making passive aggressive comments, then no matter how many I love you's you say during the day or how much of their quote unquote love language you use, your communication will not contribute to having a loving and thriving long-term relationship. And why is that? Because these three communication habits have something in common. They either dismiss or devalue your partner. And if your partner has the experience of gradually and consistently being dismissed or devalued, even if you say, I love you to them, they're not going to feel loved. In fact, dismissing or devaluing a partner is what John and Julie Gottman, the marriage psychologists, researchers, and authors, say is the main predictor that couples will not last, or that if they do, they will be deeply unhappy. So if you're listening to this episode and you recognize that you have one of these habits, then please do the most loving thing you can do for yourself, for your partner, and for the relationship, and learn to transform your communication. If you'd like my direct support, I'm taking on a few new clients right now, so you can reach out to me and schedule an initial coaching consultation with me. At this moment, I'm offering a 60-minute reduced rate consultation if you'd like to work on your communication by yourself and a 75-minute reduced rate consultation if you and your partner want to work on your communication together. To learn more, you can go to languagealchemy.com. And now, let's recap what you've learned in this episode. Today, we focused on getting really honest with yourself and assessing the quality of your communication in your long-term relationships. Remember, while it's important to say I love you and do loving things with and for your partner, what really helps a long-term relationship thrive depends on the quality of the communication. So I shared with you three communication habits you need to refrain from because they undermine a thriving long-term relationship. And these three habits are 
constantly pointing out what's lacking in the relationship or in your partner, teasing or embarrassing your partner in public, and sweeping things under the rug and constantly making passive-aggressive comments. I shared with you that these three communication habits lead to a gradual dismissal or devaluation of your partner. And when you dismiss or devalue your partner, your relationship will not last, let alone thrive. Lastly, I mentioned that if you are engaging in these communication habits, you need to do the work to transform your communication. And if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm happy to support you by offering an initial reduced rate consultation. You can go to languagealchemy.com and schedule a consultation with me. Next week, I am going to devote the whole episode answering your questions. If you have a question you'd like me to address, go to languagealchemy.com forward slash podcast question and enter your question there. Thank you so much for listening and a special thanks to all the couples I supported who have transformed their communication and are having loving and thriving long-term relationships. Until next week, and as we say in Argentina, ciao, ciao. Original music by Gary LaPau. You can find all links in the show notes at languagealchemy.com.